Welcome back to Disturbed Reality. The topic of real life gore is something that fascinates many of us, mainly down to our morbid curiosity, though the morality of being able to freely view such content is in question. In fact, one of the main criticisms for channels such as my own, Plagued Moths and Cold Ravens, is that we're using death for some cheap likes and views, and the morality of such content creators is pulled into question. That topic in itself is worth a video in the future, as I personally do not see it that way. But my question is, does gore content have any other value than cheap thrills and pure shock value? Maybe controversially, I would say yes. Lessons can be learned from some of the graphic content available online. I've personally found some sort of value in such content. For example, car crash videos and pictures. It's nothing to brag about, but in the past I've had a habit of driving without a seatbelt and even speeding. However, when I view such content such as Porsche Girl, the death of Nikki Katsouris, it definitely resonates with me to the point where I will take extra due diligence on the roads while driving and not take any unnecessary risks that will put myself at risk or others on the roads. There's no doubt in my mind that shock value and graphic content can have this effect on people. I mean, look at cigarette packets in Europe. The cartons all have images of smoking-related health issues, some of which are quite graphic to deter potential new smokers. This is not me endorsing gore content, but the topic of the morality of such content isn't as cut and dry as some people make out. Ultimately, it's all down to the individual and how they process such content. I would even argue that certain murder videos, gore videos, or just abuse videos can go as far as exposing abuses of power in the world, whether that be war crimes, police brutality, and similar cases. So again, I don't find this topic to be as cut and dry as some people make out. But again, I think that's another video for another day. But anyway, what is the topic of today's video? Well, it's about the diving face split guy. Essentially, it's one of the OG shock videos from back in the day. And you know, again, this could be one of those videos which acts as a deterrent from people doing similar stupid things. But you know, I'm sure many of you guys have seen this video. I recall watching this video back in, I think it was 2009, 2010, basically my last year in school. And at the time, this video essentially went viral, similar to Three Guys One Hammer, Two Girls One Cup, it was in that vein. This was being shared around a lot in the playground back in the days, put it that way. But let's talk about the actual video. Now the video itself was actually released to the internet in July 2009. Originally it was uploaded to Turkish and Arabic sites, and for the first month or two, it didn't really get any traction, but that soon changed when the video found its way to US and Western websites. In around September 2009, the video then went viral. The video was recorded in the summer of 2009 in Beirut, Lebanon. The video depicts a group of teenagers having fun on a hot summer's day. The group appeared to be taking it in turns to jump in the sea from a high promenade, I would estimate that the drop is at least 20 foot high. The first teenager in the video successfully makes the jump, and he dives into the sea unharmed. The second teenager in the video is then ready to make his jump. He stands on top of the promenade, steadies himself for a second, he then takes a run up before the jump, and as he jumps, he kind of loses footing and basically slips. And immediately the jumper realises that he's in deep trouble. In midair, you can hear him panicking, he realises that he's not made the necessary clearance to miss the walkway below. He falls into the sea, but his face hits the fishing walkway below, and immediately the group he was with let out piercing screams. As the video plays forwards, the jumper's body is laying unconscious in the water, and the water around his head immediately begins to turn red from the impact of the blow. All while this is happening, the group of teenagers he was with are crying and screaming because of what they are witnessing. The video then jumps forwards, showing the rescue boat trying to save the jumper. During this portion of the video, the sea is completely blood red. The video then skips forwards again, showing the boy in hospital, and at this point we can see the true extent of his injuries, and they are absolutely horrific. Essentially what happened to the boy his face was completely split vertically from the top of his forehead to the bottom of his chin. To tell you the truth, he looked like something out of Resident Evil, 
and what makes it worse, he was alive throughout this and fully conscious. During the hospital portion of the video, you can actually see the doctor hold the boy's face together, and in various comments on Reddit and whatnot, I've seen a lot of people critique the doctor for doing this. Apparently the reason he was doing it was to assist the boy's breathing because his face was completely split in two. His nose was destroyed as was his mouth, and like I said earlier, all throughout all of this, he was fully conscious. In the video, you can actually see the boy's eyes darting around in panic, shock and pain. Throughout the video, he doesn't make much noise, only breathing noises. I'm presuming this is because his face was completely destroyed and he was basically unable to make any noise. When the doctor wasn't holding his face together, that's when you could fully see the full extent of the injuries. And yeah, it's extremely graphic. Throughout this video, um, the doctors obviously were speaking in Arabic and according to some translations, one of the doctors in the video repeatedly said, where do I start, where do I start, where do I start? Obviously because the injuries were so severe, and even an experienced doctor, I very much doubt they'll see things like that every day. So even the doctors seem shocked and surprised by this sort of injury. Now from the research that I've done online, not too much information is available in regards to the boy and who he was, but what I did find out was that he died two days after the accident. Apparently the cause of death was due to a spinal fracture and severe internal bleeding in the brain. Apparently, after the accident, the city of Beirut actually put fencing around the area where the boy jumped. Not only just because of this incident, but other similar incidents in the area as well. However, after a period of time, the fencing that was installed was actually broken by members of the public so people could continue jumping. You know what they say, right? Those who don't learn from history are deemed to repeat it. I mean, after seeing something like that, why would you want to take that risk? I mean, it's beyond me, it really is. But yeah, this is definitely one of the OG shock videos from back in the day, and one of the more brutal accident videos available online. Now for me personally, this video didn't really affect me much, even when I watched it back in the day in school, really it's just a reminder not to take any dumb, unnecessary risks with our lives. We're not invincible, things can go wrong. Why put yourself in such a position where something like this could happen? And that takes me back to the start of this video. Are some gore videos actually somewhat useful? Or in some ways maybe beneficial to people? You know, as reminders that again, we're not invincible, if we take these certain risks, we put ourselves in positions where things like this can happen. Again, I look at the Porsche girl case, I see the images, I've had a habit of driving without a seatbelt, speeding at times, but when I see things like that, it kind of sticks in my mind and makes me take the necessary precautions on the road to ensure my safety and other people's as well. I do believe lessons can be learned from these type of videos, but I want your opinion on the topic of gore, and the morality of being able to view such content. Where do you stand on this matter? I would like to hear your opinions. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this topic. Please feel free to follow me on Twitter, I have made a Twitter account for this channel, I will link it in the pinned comments below, so check out my Twitter account. Not really sure what I'm going to do with it yet, but if you guys want to get in contact with me, Twitter is definitely a good avenue to do so. Also potentially in the near future, I will make a Discord group for this channel, you know, so we can come together, discuss various topics and, you know, grow as a community. That's one thing I intend to do in the next few months on this channel, is to really build the sense of community. So look out for the Discord in the future, I will let you know when that is done. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video, of course stay safe and I'll catch you on the next one.